This is Johnny Hunkins of Popular High Riding Magazine. And today we are here with our 1968 Plymouth Valiant project car at TTI. That's Tubular Technologies Incorporated in Corona, California. Now, TTI specializes in exhaust systems and headers for most Mopars. And that's why we are here because we have in our engine bay a 660 horsepower Indy cylinder head low deck wedge. Now when we built this engine, we had it spec with a Indy cylinder head, easy one cylinder head, which has the exhaust ports in a stock location. Well, as it turns out, there aren't very many choices for headers for a high horsepower wedge motor and an A-body that can handle that kind of flow without being cut up. In other words, that means fender well headers. And most guys with rare Mopars do not want to cut their headers or do not want to cut their sheet metal. So the folks at TTI came to the rescue and actually designed a new product for this application, which you can see right here. Now these are a two and a two and one eighth inch step header, and they're designed specifically to fit a low deck Mopar wedge motor in a Mopar A body. And that would be for a stock style suspension, or in our case, we have a Riley Motorsports altercation suspension. So today we're going to show you a little bit about how they went about designing these headers. We're going to show you how well they fit, how easy they are to install, and we're going to top all that off with one of TTI's three inch X pipes and some Dynamax mufflers. Now those of you with Mopars out there probably already understand what a really tricky job it is to get a really good performing, nice looking exhaust system to fit in an A body, especially with the big block. These cars really weren't designed from the factory to have a big block. And when they did come with big blocks, they weren't tremendously powerful. And uh, you had to do quite a bit to get that in there. So the question you may be asking is, how does TTI manage to do such a good job of designing, engineering, building headers that allow the average guy to cram such a big, powerful motor in his car at home and live to tell the story. Well, that's because TTI spends a lot of time mocking up headers into fixtures. Now, what we're looking at right here, it might look like a fixture, uh, a display you might see at a trade show or something. But TTI actually has, in this case, an A-body stub frame here. And they are able to take any engine mounted in this stub here, this front suspension, and work out and calculate all the header bends that they need. Now, here we've got a Gen 3 Hemi, and this Gen 3 Hemi is currently being used to mock up some, some fitment issues here, but this, this was also used for our particular engine. Now, speaking of our engine, we have one of these and this is uh, any max block. It's aluminum. It's a little bit different than your traditional low deck wedge motor because there's a lot more beef in it. And of particular interest is the fact that your uh, oil pan rails and your bottom of the block here is extra wide because you have the cross bolted mains. Now all that means that there's extra room here that has to be accounted for for the headers. And in our case, TTI has actually gone out of their way to modify the headers so that they will fit around this block. So we wanted to point that out, that these headers are actually designed for production style block and the standard block width. Now, you probably will be able to ask for that to be done from TTI, but you're going to have to make sure you point that out up front and there will be an extra charge for it. Well, this is Mr. Mike Davis at TTI. Now, he's uh, one of the, he is the head fabricator 
and he works in the R&D department. And Mike, tell us a little bit about this header and uh, why it works so well and what you did for this particular block. Uh, for this application, we had to uh, do a little modification, as you can see down here, uh, clearance the header tubes for the cross bolts on the mains. Uh, as you explained, this indie block is much stronger, much wider, so those bolts stick out and they interfere with the header tubes. Uh, this header wasn't, uh, or this block, I should say, was not around when we designed this header, so it's just one of those things we have to deal with over the years of uh, making changes and modifying things to uh, accommodate other products. So. Well, that's good to know. Now, uh, TTI can work with you on your special application, although they try to actually get it pretty right out of the box. I, I need to really reiterate that this is designed for a large diameter exhaust for a high horsepower low deck block. So if you're going to put any sort of low deck, low deck wedge into an A-body and you have a stock location exhaust port like, like you would with the Indy Easy one cylinder head, then this is the header to use. Before you start putting in your TTI headers, it's recommended that you put some tape on them. That way, keep you from damaging the coating when you put it in the car. Now, we do have the optional satin coating. And I want to say, uh, Mike, how many different kinds of coating does TTI offer? Uh, you can either do, well, for this header, it's actually just uh, ceramic coated or ceramic coated with a polished finish. Okay, right on. A little shiny, like chrome. About what? How much extra is it to get a set of headers coated? A couple hundred bucks? Yeah, roughly. Well, they really, really look good, and the satin finish is going to look great in our uh, in our Valiant. Now you see how easily our headers went in, and that's partly a result of the fact that we have uh, Riley Motorsports altercation suspension, which is a coilover system that eliminates the torsion bar. Normally the torsion bar goes from right about this point to that hole you see in the cross member over there. And as you can see, if we did have the torsion bars, that we would have an absolutely clear shot and the headers would still be able to fit. Looking over here on this side, you can see the same situation. Our fuel lines are actually going through the torsion bar uh, locator pin over here on this side, but again, straight shot. It looks like some of those header bolts are quite easy to get to. I don't know how much of that is a function of our Willwood master cylinder and our manual brakes, but uh, you'll notice that we also have, since we have the Riley Motorsports uh, altercation suspension, we do have the rack and pinion conversion, which we've actually taken out the shaft it disconnects from the end of the, uh, the steering column there. so makes it quite a bit easier to work on on the driver's side. Now yet another reason to get an altercation suspension. What kind of wrench have you got on that thing, Mike? Yeah, just an open end wrench. It's easier to get in this tight spot. It's a uh, three eighths. Three eighths. Yeah, okay. three eighths heads on the bolts. Well, it's not really supposed to be that easy to work on a big block in an A body. Uh, it's supposed to be downright difficult to wedge one of these in here, but I have to say, and I've said it before, uh, the altercation suspension, the combination of that and the block-hugging TTI headers actually makes it uh, downright um, commodious, if I could use that word.
Another thing that was nice about this uh, Riley front end was it gave us room to leave the starter bolted to the transmission and uh, we we're still able to get the header up into place. So. so usually you have to put the header and the starter in at the same time but not the case with the uh, Riley Motorsports altercation. You just don't have that torsion bar pushing you uh, into that small space. Well, you readers might remember, I mentioned in my last video that we might not have enough room for the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, those two holes there is where the regulator was mounted and we had a fuel line going down, but we may uh, be out of the woods, I'm not sure, but um, we may actually have enough room to run our fuel lines to the carburetor with these headers, we'll, we'll find out, but uh, that's down the road. We're getting ready to put the gasket on, and uh, let's just take a close-up look at this thing. It looks like a really high-quality gasket. I might have to get back to you on this, but it looks like it's a uh, uh, graphite reinforced gasket. It looks like it's highly compressible. Yeah, you can see as he rolls it over that it's a it's a pretty substantial gasket with a pretty uh, pretty substantial reinforcement in the middle. And uh, according to Mike, they just don't leak which is good news for us. And it looks like the access to the bolts is fairly easy as well too. I guess you gotta come in from the top with a box wrench on some of them and then with the socket on others. One of the things I wanted to point out is that if your block has head studs instead of head bolts, sometimes the head studs and the nuts will have an interference with the header flange. In the case of the TTI headers, and in the case of this engine, and our Indymax block, the head bolts and the nuts do not interfere with the header flange. So this is number six spark plug, which is the second from the rear on the passenger side, uh, is a little bit tight, so Mike is actually coming in from the bottom here. Uh, to give it uh, the last tightening tweak there. Now we have our altercation front suspension which also includes a rack and pinion steering conversion. Uh, the average guy probably is going to be installing these headers with a standard style Mopar suspension and a regular steering box and steering column. Um, I understand Mike that that's a little bit different when the guy um, has a standard uh, suspension. What's the procedure there? Uh, with the standard steering uh, box and shaft, you do not have to remove that steering shaft to get the headers up in there. Basically, you'd remove the starter, and the starter would go up with the headers up at the same time, and you can get it by that shaft pretty easily. Yeah, it looks like there's quite a bit of room in there, and usually the shaft has got a straight shot to the box on the side. In the case of our situation, our uh, rack and pinion is actually further inboard, so it makes a tighter cut, which is why we have the intermediate shaft removed, and we're going to put that back in right now, now that our headers are installed. Well, our headers are bolted to the engine, and now that we've got that done, I wanted to show you sort of how these headers do a beautiful job of hugging the block, and it's absolutely amazing that uh, the precision with which they're designed and jigged and built allows them to fit without any interference. There's no problems with ground clearance. They pretty much hug the bottom of the chassis. Uh, you've got clearance even for this big Indy Max block. As we mentioned before, they've uh, dimpled the, the headers for us strategically so that they fit. And they actually did that before they coated the headers. So again, you don't really have any interference here with the, with the starter, and, uh, and we're going to put the steering shaft here up in a little bit. We decided we're going to make life easy for ourselves and go ahead and put on some oxygen sensors on these collectors. Uh, so that when we go to the dyno, and if we ever put fuel injection on it later on, we'll already have them in the right place. And we're 
also going with a TTI exhaust system, but because we've got a kind of a unique uh, system here with um, the altercation rear end or the street links rear end, we're actually going a la carte with the exhaust system components rather than going with uh, a specific system, a kit system, which actually TTI makes quite a few kits with everything included, the uh, X-pipe, the mufflers, uh, the tailpipes, and the uh, collector extensions. Second part of our installation today is the exhaust system, and we're going to start with the X-pipe system that TTI has in a 3-inch diameter. And X-pipes, as we know from testing, do a much better job of scavenging the exhaust over uh, a strict dual system or even an H system. Now if you rather have an H pipe, a uh, more traditional arrangement, TTI does offer those as well too. The TTI X pipe is a slip fit arrangement with clamps that come with it, so it is a bolt-on deal no welding or cutting under normal circumstances. The next thing Mike's going to do is he's going to take this bracket, which uh, exhaust bracket, and he's going to mount it right here on the seat belt bolt stud. Now earlier, Mike pulled the rear seat out and replaced that seat belt stud with a longer one so it actually come out farther so that he can bolt this bracket to it. And you can see it's got a nice three inch opening there for the tailpipe, the downpipe to go through. It's a really tight fit to get this Dynamax muffler on the end of the X pipe and then onto this bracket. And Mike, show us how you did that right here. Three-inch turndowns, baby. Nothing beats these on the street. Now, there's one very important thing. You can take your turndowns and you can aim them straight down if you want, but if you're very careful, you can angle them so that when you do your burnout, the exhaust will basically force the smoke out the side of the car in, in great big billowing jets. So the burnouts will be very spectacular with this car. I have actually requested that these be put in at an angle. So at some point in the future we will actually test that theory. Well, Mike has got the entire exhaust system installed, so right now it's just a matter of tightening all the clamps, holding the system up where you want it to be. We're basically done. That is TTI's 3-inch X-pipe exhaust and long tube headers for A-bodies with short deck wedge engines. Stay tuned. We're going to have more on Project Valiant really soon.